Thank you. Senator Menendez. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, to you and the ranking member. Uh, Deputy uh, Assistant Secretary Escobar, I, I understand that you and your EU counterparts have recently urged Kosovo to establish an association of Serb municipalities. And while this concept has its basis in the 2013 Brussels Agreement, I'm concerned that this would lead to a Republika Srpska within Kosovo. Moreover, Kosovo's constitutional court has found the association concept, quote, not entirely in compliance with the spirit of the Constitution. Are you concerned that such an association could lead to the destabilization of Kosovo and take away powers reserved for Kosovo's central government? I do not. Uh, and uh, it, we support the formation of association uh, for many reasons. One is it is already agreed to. Uh, and even though the Constitutional Court uh, ruled that uh, some parts of the proposal were inconsistent with the Constitution, it did not say that the association itself is unconstitutional. So in the dialogue, within the context of the dialogue, um, it is up to Kosovo and Serbia to decide how that would look. So it doesn't have to be, and we certainly don't want it to be, similar to Republika Srpska. But uh, we have urged, and um, my counterpart, Miroslav Lychak, has urged, urged the Kosovar government to look at models that they believe would be compatible uh, with them that would, not, uh, that would not undermine their sovereignty or their functionality as a way of allowing Serbs to continue to receive health care, certain benefits, and education in Serbian language. Personally, I think that this effort, which would unwind Belgrade's engagement uh, in Serbian communities and offshore it to a domestic, transparent uh, institution under the control of the government of Kosovo would actually enhance Kosovo's sovereignty, not detract from it. Well, let me ask you, I'm concerned that the state of talks, or lack thereof, is more due to Serbia's reticence to recognize Kosovo's sovereignty what concessions are you seeking from Serbia to justify pressuring Kosovo in this way? Well, first of all, the dialogue, the purpose of the dialogue is to move everything in Kosovo's direction, to be quite honest, uh, with the end result of mutual recognition and normalized relations, something that they don't have already. So it is uh, not about Kosovo's status, but about the recognition that they are a sovereign and independent country. So uh, the dialogue is the mechanism, and it's proven itself to be an effective mechanism in resolving differences between the two countries. Most recently in September, uh, when, uh, we, when the EU negotiated uh, a successful resolution uh, to the license plate uh, dispute with our support. So with our backing, and our backing to Kosovo is resolute, uh, we want to make sure that the dialogue helps them move through all the difficult challenges of unwinding the two countries' engagement, difficult engagement, to have a, um, a common European future together. Well, I hope that our commitment to Kosovo is resolute. Let me ask you, I've heard from many uh, of uh, Serbian diaspora here in the United States about the elections that are underway there and the, the lack of... Um, uh, legitimacy, the use of the government uh, in extraordinary powers as it relates to the elections, the resources that they're using that are not just their private political resources. Well, what are your insights into that? That is something that we, uh, we openly uh, express our, our concern about and privately engage with the government about. And there are three elements to this. One is the treatment of the opposition. So we believe the opposition should have uh, free and fair conditions to participate in the elections. Second, uh, the media environment. It is true that much of the, the, uh, the government-controlled and private media in Serbia uh, is very favorable to the, to the current government. And thirdly, uh, the treatment of civil society, those people who engage in democratic activities to monitor elections, to monitor media freedom, um, and to support uh, citizen engagement. Those organizations must be treated fairly by the Serbian government. And not just, it's not just the United States who has made this clear, but also the European Union, the OSCE, um, and not other international organizations that have been very clear about our expectations for the April elections in Serbia. But as of now, that, that is not the case. As of now, there are 
definitely concerns about all of that. Yeah, one final question, if I may, Madam Chair. Um, you know, uh, Vucic traveled to Moscow in December seeking cheap gas, which he got, and returned the Russians got uh, uh, some uh, contracts uh, inside of Serbia. He was also in Beijing not too long ago to discuss a free trade agreement that he's now touting in his reelection campaign. Uh, it seems to me that both Russia and China are making significant inroads in the Western Balkans. What uh, what are we doing to combat malign Russian and Chinese influences um, in this regard? Well, first of all, uh, it is true that the influence of Russia and China is malign in the Western Balkans. Uh, in the case of Russia, uh, Russia does not even uh, is not even in the top ten uh, uh, biggest trade partners for the Western Balkans. Um, it is mostly about energy. So, on the energy security front. We have encouraged Serbia uh, to look at alternatives to Russian gas, including renewables and liquid natural gas, and we have made some progress there. Uh, with regard to the political uh, influence, uh, over the last year, Serbia has become more aligned uh, with European Union foreign policy, including not recognizing Crimea. So we are making inroads politically on that. In the case of China, uh, we have encouraged reforms and greater transparency in the procurement process that gives Chinese firms uh, and uh, the Chinese Communist Party a leg up over American and European uh, countries. But one of the reasons that we support a more integrated uh, market for the Western Balkans is that if it is more integrated and more integrated with Europe, with, with institutional standards that match those of Europe, it will create opportunities for greater transparency, uh, greater uh, openness in procurement and requirements for environmental and social um, uh, impact um, easements that will give American and European firms the advantage uh, over Chinese in the region. I look forward to following up with you on some of these issues. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Menendez.